so here we are, Christmas 2020, we've made it. Socially distanced, high fives, air hugs, all around. Yes, this is gonna be a Christmas like no other for many, if not all of us, but it is Christmas, so let's make the absolute best of it. Welcome to our Christmas video, Comfort and Joy. We've called it that because we feel all of us could do with a little bit extra comfort and joy this Christmas. You know, this Christmas comes at the end of a strange and weird and challenging year. And I remember the headlines back in September and October, the media were announcing that maybe this year Christmas would be canceled, that dun, 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 COVID had killed Christmas. Well, don't worry kids and adults, Christmas has not been canceled. Christmas is very much alive. You know, when I heard those headlines, I was reminded of Narnia in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, a book by C.S. Lewis. In his book, Narnia is a magical kingdom created by the good king Aslan, but it's come under the spell of the evil queen, Jadis. She's known as the White Witch because she's cursed the inhabitants of Narnia to live in a perpetual winter of frozen snow and ice, and worst of all, She's banned Christmas. Four children from the real world stumble into Narnia and one of the children, a girl called Lucy, meets a character called Mr. Tumnus. And he explains the situation to Lucy and says this, in Narnia, it's always winter, but never Christmas. Always winter, but never Christmas. That's enough to give you chills. Now, I know not everybody loves Christmas as much as everyone else, so here's the opportunity for some full disclosure. We're going to use the scientifically proven measure of Christmasiness, the Living Rock Church Eulometer. On this end of the scale, zero. We have Ebenezer Scrooge and the Grinch eating gruel and complaining bitterly about the price of wrapping paper. And on the other end, up to 10, we have Buddy the Elf and Arthur Christmas enjoying a Christmas log chocolate fondue, wrapping presents, and listening to Santa Baby. So where are you on our Christmas Eulometer? Our hope is that by the end of this video, we'll have moved you further along the scale, up to 10, or maybe even beyond. You know, if I was gonna score myself, I'd definitely be a solid eight on our Eulometer. I love Christmas. For me, it's the big one. There are so many things I enjoy about Christmas. The movies, the music, the meals, the get-togethers, the goodies and the gifts, the fun with family and friends. All of those things bring a real sense of comfort and joy. We decided to visit some of our friends from Living Rock Church and ask them what gives them a sense of comfort and joy, especially at Christmas. And here's what they have to say. So what brings me joy and um, comfort or comfort and joy is that I'm that I'm there to with my presents with my family. For me, it's spending time with family. Meeting people. I think it's people at Christmas. They seem happy and content. Everybody's friendly and there's a lovely atmosphere. What brings us comfort and joy is having our families around, seeing our children when they were young, running down the stairs and opening their presents. Making snow angels. Being with family. I love sitting around the table and eating really good food. What gives me comfort and joy is uh, a nice warm fire and lovely food. My family. Presents. Knowing that I have all that I need. Yeah. Having a warm house. Yeah. Having lots of food. Sweet treats. Nice food. <laughs> 
Yeah, being together with my family and eating Christmas pudding <laughs> with a little brandy sauce. Christmas presents. Singing Christmas carols. I'm going to go back to my youth, my yeah. very, 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 very youth in the early 50s. Yeah. And it's always been opening presents. I love to wrap up on a cold Christmassy day with all my family, go for a walk, including our dog, and then come home to a roaring fire and hot chocolate <laughs> and mince pies. I like spending time with my family. For me, it's listening to Christmas music and giving gifts to my friends and family. It's spending time with family. I like opening my presents with a family. Traditional Christmas dinner. And I like when we have, after we've had Christmas dinner, playing games, charades and all these other, other silly games, but it's great fun. Uh, what gives me comfort and joy is that I know Jesus um, was born on Christmas Day. The lights, because everybody's going to put lights up on the houses that lighten up even the darkest day. You know, I uh, enjoyed hearing what everybody had to say and the thought of a cold walk, coming home to a warm house, maybe an open fire, sounds really good right now. This time with family and friends to enjoy food together, to play games and to share gifts. I'm sure you'd have said many of those things yourself and maybe added some other things into the mix as well. And it's a great question. What gives us comfort and joy at Christmas, but probably a, an even more important question is, can we experience comfort and joy no matter what time of the year it is? Can we experience comfort and joy even when we don't have the material things, or more importantly, the family and people around us that bring us comfort and joy? I believe that we can. I believe that's at the heart of the Christian message, that through a relationship with God, we can know and experience comfort and joy no matter what. Holy tide of Christmas, all other 
comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Joy to the world has come. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. He rules the world and grace. He rules the world with truth and grace. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains Repeat the sounding joy Comfort and joy Repeat the sounding Comfort joy and joy As we've just heard these two words, comfort and joy, are used over and over again in the carol, God rest ye merry gentlemen, and describe what comes from hearing the glad tidings, glad tidings just means the good news of Jesus' birth. Comfort and joy, they're such great words, they're wholesome and they're lovely and they're full of goodness, they're packed with hope. And we can live every day really knowing a comfort and joy that actually isn't dependent on the time of year or on having good things or even good people around us. Instead, it depends on the good news that God sent his son to save us. News that we're reminded of each and every Christmas. So why is that such good news? Well, it's because it tells us that we can experience comfort, the comfort of a total relief of having our sins forgiven, the security of knowing peace with God as our Father. And then we can experience joy, the joy of being freed from living under the power of sin, which keeps us in the cycle of bad choices and being victims of worry and anxiety and fear. I, I know that sin is probably an old fashioned word that relates more maybe to Weight Watchers than anything for many, but it just means our selfishness and independence from God. It's self-centeredness, it's not caring about what God thinks or with that, what is truly right. Rather, we live based on what we think is right. The trouble is we aren't always right, are we? And we're all flawed and it can lead to us making selfish choices that will hurt others, damage ourselves and go against what God wants. Sin is toxic stuff and God wants to save us from it. Whether we like it or not, we all need a savior. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God, tell them that their sad days are gone and sins are pardoned. That's what Isaiah says in the Old Testament of the Bible. He's saying God's words of comfort, that sad days are gone. Why? Because sins have been forgiven, sins have been pardoned. We can know the comfort that our sins, which deserved punishment, have been and can be forgiven. Sin separates us from God. It's, it's like it puts us out in the cold. It's like a young son who believes that he can do better on his own without his family and away from his father. And late one night, he decides to leave. He's off and he steps out from the warmth of his home into the winter's night, slamming the door closed behind him. And then as he stands in the freezing air, he realizes he's locked out and actually he has nowhere to go, but he's too proud to go back. And so he stands there shivering 
Exposed to the elements, his teeth start chattering. He's freezing cold. There's nothing he can do to warm himself up on a bitterly cold winter's night. And it dawns on him, I've brought this on myself. Things have gone awry because I've gone astray. And then suddenly the door opens and the warm light of home streams out towards him. He sees his father and brother's silhouette in the doorway. And as his father points towards him, his, his older brother comes out to meet him, wrapped in a fleecy, warm blanket. The older brother comes close, and now he offers him his blanket. He's willing to allow his younger brother to be warm and covered. And in his place, he will suffer the coldness of the winter's night. That's what Jesus has done for us. He came to us from the Father to rescue us from the cold. It's, it's kind of a picture of the Christmas story. Going back to the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, the great lion, Aslan, is the creator of Narnia, and he is actually the only one who can save it. And in the story, as he moves through Narnia to rescue it from its cold curse, the seasons change around him, from bleak winter to joyful spring, from death to life. And not only that, but he then willingly sacrifices himself to save the life of one of the children, a boy called Edmund who had turned his back on Aslan and been tricked by the witch. And as Aslan dies in the place of Edmund, the witch thinks she's won, that evil has overcome good. But then Aslan comes back to life and he defeats the white witch once and for all. Aslan breaks the curse and power of evil. He restores comfort and joy to Narnia. And of course, the story by C.S. Lewis presents a wonderful picture of Christmas and of what Jesus has done. That when Jesus came into the world, he transformed it by dying on the cross. He took our suffering on himself. He paid the price for our sins with his own life, but he rose again and he returned to his heavenly father and he is alive. And although we walked away and we were cold and in the dark, he came to us and he, he covers us and he's calling us back home. If, if we'll follow him, he'll comfort us and he'll bring us back to where we belong, at home with our Father, our Heavenly Father. Psalm 1611 says that being in God's presence, being close to God, brings us into a fullness, a completeness of joy.
You know, the Christmas message is that God, as our Heavenly Father, has sent His Son Jesus, who willingly came to us and for us. We asked the same people at the beginning what it was about their faith in Jesus that brings them comfort and joy, and here's what they had to say. For me, it's knowing that God's always provided for me and always will do. Comfort as a believer comes from knowing that God loves me, loves me, loves me, more than I could ever, ever imagine. Me, personally, it's peace. It's just knowing inside that um, I've got nothing to worry about. As a believer, I think I get comfort and joy from the understanding and the knowledge that God is always with me for everything. He's my father. Although he's so famous and so high and so wonderful and so marvellous, he still loves me. Yeah. And that is wonderful. Yeah. Knowing that Jesus loves us. Jesus is always there for us, helping us, supporting us, taking care of us. I think that's the greatest joy ever, just to know that someone, and it's not just someone, it's the Prince of Peace, is the Lord of Lords who is always there for us. My comfort and joy is he's always with you even when you try and run away. Knowing that God has a plan for my life. Knowing that he's with us all the time. God's always in control, and I think the Christmas story in particular shows us that even when Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem and there was just nowhere for them to be, they must have wondered what on earth was going on, and yet God always had a plan, and I think that's what we're taking as a family this Christmas. Actually, God's just got this sorted. Knowing that God gave us his son um, as a gift, whatever storms we face in life, uh, the Lord is always with us. My ultimate comfort and joy in knowing Jesus is I know that Jesus is for eternity, not just for Christmas. The love of God and forgiveness. Knowing that Jesus is in our lives every day, uh, that makes us feel <coughs> comfortable and having joy in our lives. I think I'd have to say that knowing that God has everything covered, um, and more importantly, around winter time is that health. It's really important that knowing that that's covered. He's like your shadow, because he's like there when you're wherever, really. Yeah. Walking down the street, walking the street. up the stairs, eating your lunch. Mm -hmm. How can you not be full of joy? Jesus does. <laughs> Jesus makes you wear Christmas trees <laughs> on your head and earrings that jingle jangle. You know, what comes across in those conversations on the doorstep is that in challenging times, or especially in challenging times, people have known peace. People have talked about knowing God's strength, the knowledge that God loves them, cares about them, has a plan for them, that he has a plan for our lives. God has a plan for your life. And as Christians, we're so grateful to have a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, that we can follow him every day. We can follow his lead. You know, I can stand here today and say that in my own life, I've known God's comfort during times of sadness and loss. I've known his peace in good times and bad times, that it's been a joy to have a relationship with God through my faith in Jesus. I'm so glad that Jesus is my living savior. And that's the thing, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. It's about a father sending a son so that he could bring his children back home. Jesus came so that he could come and cover us and lead us back to where we belong, to God's warmth and light. You know, here at Living Rock Church, we would love to talk to you if you're interested in finding out more about church and faith, about Jesus and Christianity. That's what we're here to do, so please get in touch with us. There's some details on the screen right now as to how you can do that, or just come and visit us on the church website. You can get in touch with us there. My prayer is that you will experience God's love. You'll experience his comfort and joy this Christmas, and I hope that this film has uh, increased your Christmasiness, that it's moved you along the Eulometer. Thanks so much for watching. Have a very, very Merry Christmas.
gave it another polish, the guitar. Yeah, let's do it. Let's stop fussing around. <laughs> Go back to where we did rock and roll. Huh? <laughs> what's the best wine at Christmas? I don't know. What's the best wine at Christmas? Oh, I hate Brussels sprouts. Oh, oh good. Oh.